from the 5.4 release. Nope, there's the recording. Uh, and then uh, I did bring along some friends to talk through some things and do some demos, so that's awesome. And then V6, which I put some of the highlights between the alpha and beta milestones, and then some more of the, the testing and feedback process moving forward. All right, 5.4, this is the final release of Patternfly 5. So if you look back to Patternfly 4, there was a lot of smaller Patternfly releases, but only four quarterly releases with this version of Patternfly. Uh, all right, severity icons is a new concept. It was worked on quite a bit by a designer named Shana, uh, who took, uh, did a lot of in-depth research and really worked on this a lot. So I really appreciate all the work that she did there. Um, we came up with a range of up to six statuses. These are separate from alerts. It's not our success warning failure um, statuses. These are more risk associated. So things like CVEs um, would kind of benefit from a consistent look across products. The scale is di difficult to kind of nail down. So she did come up with a range, uh, a link to a slide deck that has the, the full details that she provided. Um, so she created a scale of six, five, four, three different severities, and then just provide a consistent icon for all these before they were using the same icon, but associating just the different color treatments, which wasn't uh, altogether very accessible. So she did this icon set to reflect um, more of the accessibility concerns and address all that yes. stuff there. So there's a, they're currently in the V6 kit uh, in Figma now, they're available on patternfly.org uh, with 5.4, and they will be merged into the Patternfly 5 uh, Figma kit later today. Uh, I'm going to actually hand it over to Aaron to talk about the content updates. Yes, thank you. Um, so just a few things here uh, that I wanted to share out, and these are updates um, just like we've been doing for the past couple of quarters now um, that are just part of the ongoing content audit. Um, so some of the changes that you'll see with the Patternfly 5.4 release is with our onboarding guides. Um, and by that, I'm referring to some of our Get Started pages or the pages within the Get Started section of our website. And these changes were influenced by some of the user research that we did um, last year. So I listed out some of those changes here. Um, and if you squint, you might be able to see it in the screenshot on the right. But yeah, I definitely encourage you to check out the website yourself. Um, but kind of combining some pages, merging pages for simplicity, um, and then updating information and page design uh, to kind of align with what we are finding in our user research. So all the same information or more or better information is there. Um, and then there are also a few updates to our UX writing guide. Um, this was a project done in collaboration with some of our product-based technical writers here at Red Hat, uh, just to make sure that our writing guides are aligned with some of the, the guidelines in our um, product documentation. Um, so those are small changes, but just for consistency sake. Um, and then finally, you will see uh, a lot of updates with our topology docs. Um, these were uh, just part of the content audit process for consistency, aligning with some of the the phrasing, terminology, and style that you'll see across the rest of Patternfly documentation. So um, yeah, those, again, there's a little screenshot here. You won't really see um, a huge change, just a little bit more enhancement there. Um, and then just to preview a little bit of what's next, I am planning to focus on the pattern section of the website for our next part of our content audit. So um, yeah, the next quarter or so, you'll be hearing about that as well. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, next is core updates with Michael. Hey, thanks, Andrew. Um, yeah, just a few things uh, for this upcoming release. Um, you can currently pass additional info to form uh, in the form component you, to form labels. You can pass uh, some text that displays beside of the, the regular label text um, on non-horizontal forms that wasn't supported in horizontal forms where the uh, the form label is to the left of your inputs, uh, your form controls. And so we just extended that support for the additional info to uh, to horizontal forms and that additional text uh, displays below the uh, where the where the label is in a horizontal form. Um, progress stepper step titles, uh, when they had a like the dashed underline that indicated they have more information on them and 
the uh, clicking or whatever will trigger a pop-up with some extra text. A little bit of extra space was being added to that element, just a bug on the CSS side. So we clean that up, uh, cleans up the layout a little bit. Uh, and then with uh, split button menu toggles, um, we just extended support for one of the elements in this in the uh, split button toggle to be a button with a toggle icon, but also to have text in it. Uh, that just wasn't a use case that we had up until recently. So we added that feature. Um, so now you can have what looks like a regular menu toggle, just some text and a toggle icon, then next to uh, some other action in a split uh, split button toggle. And then up last, uh, rarely do we make these updates. This is pretty exciting, but we added a new uh, bit to one of our utility classes. So we have a display utility class that sets the display property for things. So display flex, uh, block, inline, whatever. And we added support for display grid and display inline grid. So use those uh, and enjoy. That's it. Thank you. Uh, to Tony and, and Co, I guess. Yeah, good morning. Um, yes, just to go over some um, of the highlights for the upcoming 5.4 release in React, um, we made some changes to the drag drop. Um, one of them is, was with the drag drop next. We added a new feature um, to maintain parity with the old drag and drop. We added support for multi drop zones. And um, Katie will be giving a demo about that later. Um, and then we updated the one of our examples with the old drag and drop to um, use a flex layout instead of the split one it was using. Um, and this demonstrates how one might maintain. Um, like target spacing within an empty list. So when you drag all the items over to one list, um, consumers were saying that the the empty list, they couldn't drag any items back. But now by using the flex layout, you're able to do, do that. Um, and then we added a new feature to the table. We added support for editable um, table rows. And Adam will be demonstrating that um, later on as well. And then there was a new prop added to the wizard um, called should focus content. And this was an accessibility enhancement that um, Eric will be going over later. And um, we also added some new props to the page component um, that allows customization of uh, the drawer width within a page. Um, and then we fixed an issue with the next modal where the um, icon variant status um, icons were not um, receiving uh, proper styling. So now they do. Um, and there was an update to the trunk cake component. Um, it was reported that um, full tips were being displayed even when the there was no truncation happening. And now um, there will be no tooltip displayed when there is no trun truncation. That's an overview. Um, and then next we'll have um, Katie, um, then Adam, and Eric demo um, some of the changes I just talked about. I guess over to Katie. I'll stop presenting, Katie, so you can take sure. over. Thank you. Let me find the correct tab. All right, so going over our drag and drop next. So we've got couple new demos that'll showcase this multiple drop zones feature. So on the drag and drop next page, you'll see the basic example and then a new multiple drop zones example that's modeled after the basic example. So you've got two groups here aligned vertically. So if you click one, you can now see that you can drag between both groups, which is parity from our old feature that it didn't have. This still works with keyboard navigation. So you'll see if I press down arrow, it's smart enough to detect that the drop zone that's next to it is down. So if you press down arrow again, it'll go back and forth between the two drop zones. And if you cancel, it'll revert back to the previous drop zone. Um, for actual setup, just briefly, this is done by having a container con component that wraps all of the different drop zones that you can create. And you just need to give the overall container kind of a map of all of the items and each drop zone will have its own items that are specific to that container. 
The other two new demos are in the React Next demo section. So in our old demos, we had our just sortable data list and sortable dual list selector. And below that, you'll have the multiple drop zone demos that show off both of those, but with multiple drop zones. The first up is the data list, which again, you are horizontally aligned. So they'll go back and forth. And then this is again with keyword navigation. If you press right arrow, it's smart enough to detect that, hey, I need to move to the right or the left. And if you press space or enter, it will confirm. And lastly, for doula selector, same thing. You'll be able to drag and drop in each of these demos, each of these panes. Whoops. My tab targeting did not quite work there. All right. So if you click one with your keyboard, again, if you press the right on the arrow key, it's smart enough to go to the right. And if you could drop that wherever. And again, this can still work as a dual list selector. And then if you move stuff back. And that's about the summary for the new drag and drop feature. Thank you. I believe uh, Adam might have been next. Yes, I'll take over the screen. Yeah, so uh, about the uh, editable rows demo. Uh, so uh, we, we added this example uh, of a table with editable rows. Uh, there's, there's a button which you can click and now the cells become editable. We can, I don't know, uh, Edit, edit these cells as you want. And then when you click save, uh, it's edited. Uh, you can also, like if you if you write something you don't want, you can cancel and uh, the old text uh, stays there. Uh, it's also all uh, accessible uh, through your keyboard. So we can, uh, we can uh, access it uh, this way. Uh, about about the code, uh, let me quickly show. There's there's like nothing, no new core feature. It's all just made out of uh, the existing uh, components. Uh, so you can you can customize it uh, as you want. Uh, probably the most uh, significant thing is this uh, edit buttons cell, uh, which is a custom component uh, which includes these. Uh, save, cancel, or uh, edit buttons. And how it works is that uh, if you click edit, then you set editable to true. So you change all these uh, cells uh, to the editable mode. And if you click save, then uh, you, you can you can pass here any custom function to, to save changes. And uh, if you click cancel, so you basically reset the edited data you, you have just uh, written back to the uh back to the data uh, at the you had at the beginning yeah that's all you can you can go through it uh yeah i'll, I'll send the link to the chat and yeah that's that's it thanks adam uh eric i think you're next Yep. Hello. Let me share the screen. Okay. So, yep. Uh, we've added a new prop to our wizard component. Uh, should focus content. Uh, basically, uh, this was based off an ask from a consumer, and the issue was that. Uh, if you go through a wizard uh, via keyboard or similar or other assistive tech, um, and you're on the next or back buttons, you hit uh, enter or space to trigger the next or back. Uh, the focus stays on uh, whatever button you pressed, basically. So you just saw I hit uh, next a couple times with the keyboard, and it stayed on the focus stayed on the next button. Uh, if I hit enter on uh, the back button, focus stays there. Uh, if there's nothing, if it's like disabled, uh, seems like it kind of disappears to focus. But you know, if I hit tab, we're back on the next button. 
So uh, that's the default behavior for v5. Um, so this prop is opt in. Uh, so let me paste it there. Uh, should focus content goes on the outermost wizard uh, wrapper. Um, so basically now, if I am going through via keyboard, and we get to this next button, and let me just scroll up a bit, and if I hit Enter, uh, focus is placed into that main content area of the wizard. Um, and then from there, you would, you know, go through, is there any form inputs or what have you there? You go through that, and then you would get back to uh, these next or back buttons. And work similarly if you go back. Um, worth noting that it's only for um, when the on next and on back uh, callbacks are called. Um, so if you're going through the navigation of a wizard and you know you select a step there, uh, focus will not move when you hit enter or space to trigger uh, one of those steps. Uh, the idea being that if you're in the navigation and you're clicking on one of those items there, uh, the assumption is that you're wanting to you know maybe go through the steps and see what they're about. Um, versus if you're on these next or back buttons, you are actively trying to fill out whatever content is in a wizard and moving the moving the focus at that point, uh, you feel is more advantageous because otherwise you might have to, you know, focus state on the next button. You have to shift tab all the way back through however much content uh, might be there. So this uh, kind of helps alleviate um, that issue in terms of accessibility. Um, like I said, that is opt-in for V5. So if you want that functionality, you just pass that prop in. Um, worth noting that for V6, that will is intended to be the default. So it'd be opt-out. And it also does not affect our um, deprecated wizard. So if you're still using the deprecated wizard that was from V4. This prop is not there. You have to be using the at least V5 wizard to uh, benefit from that prop. And that's basically it. Awesome. Thanks, Eric. Uh, the next slide is Kate. Kate, do you need the screen at all, or should I share my screen again? Uh, you can just share the screen again. Okay, go ahead. And yeah, so also coming in 5.4, I wanted to cover some of the new updates to templates. So in 5.4, we've got two new templates officially arriving. That is simple drop down and multi type ahead select. So there will be more options for people to use for migration efforts. Um, also, we've renamed two of the templates from select simple to simple select and select type ahead to type ahead select just to be more in line with how we ended up naming the rest of the templates to get some consistency there. And then other template improvements, we've got a couple new props, um, some in line with getting the cu customization of the toggle, make it more flexible. So we've got the new toggle width property. This is just an easy way to set the width of your toggle without having to necessarily go through the other new property, which is toggle props. And this will be spread onto the toggle. So any other menu toggle properties that you may need to access to customize your solution, you can now access that through the toggle props property. For the type ahead select and new multi-type ahead select templates, we have the a new no options found message property. This will let you customize the message that's displayed when the filter does not return any results. And we also have handling for initial selections that are not made from when you actually interact with the component, but you can actually set some default selections and have that update everything properly. And not listed here, but one last thing I wanted to mention was that we've officially extended the props interfaces for all of these templates to their respective selector dropdown. So you can access additional props that may not explicitly be found on the template, but if they're on the select or drop down components, you can still use them and it'll get spread and passed properly to the internal components. Then I think that covers it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Uh, up next, we have uh, Don is going to talk about some release workspace extension stuff. Hey, everybody. Good morning. 
Uh, so for release, what do we got going on? Um, currently in the process of testing with different uh, products right now, OpenShift, uh, RoHI, Ro OpenAI. Um, on top of that, we also have updates for extensions, uh, the extensions that are affected our console, quick starts, topology, and log viewer. Uh, for log viewer, we have we uh, have log viewer props, which are now available to people. Uh, we have a fix in quick starts that's around the focus of quick start panel grabbing the focus. Console, we added an update that added a fix for virtual manager where it was downloading from. For topology, we have pipelines updates. Um, these include things as such as custom status icon, group label components. Um, there's an update to expand and collapse groups. We also have selectable task schedules and some styling updates. Um, for group labels, we also added the ability to center group labels on edge and display group labels on hover. For control bar, we added a new expand all collapse button. And then there was a degree layout update as well. Um, and then on top of that, um, Patternfly, uh, the project when you build it now, has support for Node 20 and Yarn 4. With Yarn 4, that also added, we also had to add Core Pack, which is a package manager that's used for managing uh, your package managers. Um, so what what is that? What do you have to do? Um, you have to enable it because it's disabled by default, and you do that by typing Core Pack enable. Just so everybody knows that when you do enable it, it's a system-wide setting, so it will affect other projects that you worked on. And what it does is it'll also add a package manager field if you don't have one in your current project, so you will see that. And with it, it will have a checksum for the current version of Yarn you're using, so that will show up. Um, if you are working on a project and want to disable it again, you can type core pack disable to disable it but it is a feature that we do use in Patternfly React now, so it's something everybody should be aware of. Um, with it, you will also see updates to your yarn.lock file, um, including the way that, and your package manager will also see updates to the way that your packages are laid out, so it, it lays them out in alphabetical order, so you may see an update to that too. Uh, but it's something everybody should be aware of. And that's it on the release and extension side. Thank you. And Jane's going to elaborate on some of the topology notes that you mentioned. Hello. Yes. So we have a bunch of cool uh, topology pipelines features that went into the 5.4 release. So all really interesting stuff. Uh, so yeah, we updated the digger layout version to the latest release. We also added expand collapse all functionality for node groups. So that's what you see there on the right, where um, in that little toolbar, we have those new actions that support expand or collapse all for pipelines. So that makes it super easy to go in and expand a bunch of nodes uh, with really busy, complex pipelines. Uh, we saw that in row AI. So that was a big, uh, a big win there. Um, we've also added the ability to focus on newly expanded and collapsed groups. So that's another big one for OAI because they had some pretty big complex pipelines. So when we would expand them, um, it wouldn't really focus on that, but it does now, uh, which is great news. Um, we've also added support for custom group label component um, and the ability to center the group's label on the edge. So that's what you see um, on the right as well. So those group labels are now centered uh, and we previously had them hovering above the groups, but now it sits directly in the middle uh, of the top edge. We've also uh, added the ability to show group labels on hover, which is what you see in that bottom left or bottom right, sorry, image over there. Um, so when you hover the group at, at a low details level, it's gonna show you the title of the group and you can expand from there. Even at um, even at small details level, and we've also added the ability to support the custom status icon on the task node. So on that lower left image, uh, now a user can pass in whatever icon they want, and that'll uh, get applied to their task node. And um, yeah, so that allows for more customization of those task nodes. And yeah, that's it for the topology updates. Great, thank you. All right, so that wraps up Pattern Fly Five with this final release. Uh, so now we can talk a bit about what's coming next from Powerfly 6. So as mentioned earlier, we're in the process of the 5.4 release. And once that's out the door, uh, the wheels will begin to turn on that release as well for beta. Uh, this will be kind of code freeze testing at this stage. So we won't be doing big um, changes to the code, more addressing bugs that have already been established and, and certainly taking in more feedback and refining before we release in August. 
So some of the updates include, um, we switched the text, which was previously a fixed variable to uh, rem. Uh, so that in, in includes more customization uh, from the user side. The navigation component now supports an icon in the nav item and like top level navigation. Uh, so that is a prop that can now be passed in both core and react. Uh, our token documentation has been greatly improved from the alpha release uh, and we're adding even more functionality, including um, there's a PR up in our design tokens repo that improves the all tokens page, uh, lays the structure a little bit differently and it also includes descriptions for each token. So it gives a better understanding of what the tokens represent and how you would apply them. Uh, the colors, typography, icons, and spacers pages have all been updated with the new semantic token layers and um, instructions on how to use them, the right tokens in the right space. We're putting our next components and topology uh, is now running on the latest V6 code, as well as all of our extensions, including the, um, the React component groups, which was contributed by HCC. They did a lot of work to take in the latest releases uh, of the alphas and well, We've done a design review of all those component changes and uh, the feedback will be handed over to the team this week uh, for more updates and replacing some of the semantic tokens. Uh, we did further refinements from the alpha to now uh, just to include more updated semantic tokens. Um, we've increased a lot of new uh, semantic layering for things like spacers, so it's very descript about how to apply them. So there's less guesswork. It's not necessarily just plugging in a spacer small or spacer medium. Um, we actually have tokens like action to action within a group kind of thing. So it really lays out exactly uh, the intended use for these tokens. So it's a little bit easier from the consumer standpoint on how to build your own or make changes. The Patternfly 6 component library as well as the extensions library are available next week. We'll have our first onboarding sessions during the day of learning uh, where Lucia and Chris and Kayla and uh, the Patternfly design team will be kind of helping facilitate sessions to enable designers to move over to Patternfly 6 from 5 and start designing their libraries. Uh, so the, the library itself is a little bit different. So there's a little bit of an onboarding um, from V5, but uh, the training will kind of cover all that stuff. And lastly, uh, another highlight is micro animation. We've done a lot of work um, to enable a design token framework to enable components to start adopting micro animations, as well as fallbacks for reduced motion so that we don't, uh, we have kind of, we're doing it responsibly so that it's not putting anything in a user's uh, space that is kind of unwanted. So we have a plan to release um, components with animations moving forward and we're going to kind of go in stages throughout the rest of the the v6 timeline uh, starting in 6.1 we'll start with things like toast alerts um, navigation so the expansions will all be animated um, but again respecting the reduced motion uh, preferences of users there's a lot in in beta and v6 there's been a lot of progress obviously uh, and we definitely are looking forward to hearing more feedback on it and getting it out the door and in the hands of more testers. So this is the overall timeline. We're still targeting the, the August timeframe. Um, we have been talking with a lot more uh, products. Um, managers like Nicole and Evan have done a really good job of trying to socialize and get on uh, product roadmaps and migrate over to Patternfly 6. There are other dependencies, uh, things like the new uh, Patternfly chatbot extension that we're working on right now, which will be based on v6 uh, is targeted for August. So they're going to be consuming the, the latest beta and Patternfly 6 moving forward. So it won't be available in Patternfly 5. It's only a v6 uh, extension moving forward. So there's a lot of moving pieces to get all this stuff out the door, um, but we're still trying to get it all wrapped up within the August as uh, we previously stated. And so any new features or requests are bugs that are filed, we'll just do our standard triaging and try and get everything we can in uh, ahead of the release and then make the plan to navigate um, and get them into our roadmap following the V6 release. So we're just asking for your help with testing again. Uh, this is just an ongoing effort, obviously, and we, we do welcome all feedback 
uh, we will prioritize, as I said, do our best to get everything addressed in a timely manner and um, make plans to have follow-up issues as we need. So um, I have a PR, but I'm gonna actually update an existing template just to have a, a beta bug um, issue in our repos now. So that'll be available with the beta release, uh, as well as Nicole has a document on uh, filing issues and that is linked in this agenda as well. And that is it in a nutshell. Uh, open the floor up to questions, comments, concerns. Funny jokes. I don't have any jokes today. I'm sorry. I did not come prepared for jokes anyway. Everything is a okay, awesome. So I think we're good to go. Uh, we'll be doing, we'll be posting the the beta release on our pattern fly release and up, like every possible channel we can uh, when the beta is available for testing. Uh, so stay tuned for that on Slack and uh, social media. And there'll be a blog post on Medium when the release goes live. Um, yeah, we'll be screaming from the mountaintops at that point, probably. <laughs> if there's no questions or uh, anything anyone wants to bring up, we can wrap a little bit early. Um, speak now or forever hold your peace. Peace. Hope everyone has a good rest of your Wednesday and see you next